Well, hello there. I am Drew Badger, the world's first and number one English fluency guide with the most boring background. I'm so sorry about this. Really, I apologize. I wish I had a more interesting, entertaining background. Hopefully, I find one at some point. But if you live in a small town in Japan, it's hard to find good places to record because the walls are so thin. Anyway,、uh, I hope you can bear with me until I do find a place. But really, you are presumably here for the fantastic information I have to offer you, and not because of really even my pretty face or the way the background looks. Anyway, what I'd like to talk about in this video,、uh, I was really excited. I've been really excited to make this video for a while because really it's the、uh, explaining almost everything about what I do in one video. So I thought that would be really cool to make this because it answers just like a really Big question that people have,、uh, and this is: I can read, write, and understand people. Even if you can understand me, or you can understand everything you see in a movie, but you can't speak. So why is it that people have this problem where they have? It's like they go to school, they go to an English learning program, or you learn with programs like this. You know, you're watching videos, or you're, you know, maybe you've taken some classes or read some books about it, and it seems like you should be speaking fluently. So that's why it's confusing. You should be speaking. Okay, you learned all these words and you know some grammar points and you can understand things quite well. So why can't you speak? And it's really, it's really frustrating. And really, the the reason, the the whole thing about the way I teach is explaining this one thing. Now, this one thing is really important.、Uh, so remember this. And whether you learn with me, whether you learn with my lessons or not, this one thing is the most important thing to remember and to understand about developing fluency. And that is. The way you learn to read, write, and listen is different from the way you learn to speak. So, in general, like just looking at these couple of skills very quickly, reading, writing, and listening are all when you apply them. Whether it's just like listening to something, or reading, or writing something, these are all slow skills. So, what I call slow skills are things that you can take time when you do them. So, when you apply these things in your conversations, or if you're just by yourself reading something, you can always take time to think. If I'm saying something right now, and maybe you don't understand everything exactly, you can still get the general idea of what I'm saying. Or you can read the transcript and follow along if you try to understand some words. Or you can even take a word I use that you don't quite understand, and you can look it up. But all these things they take time when you're in a conversation.、Uh, so if you're listening to a video like this, maybe you don't have to think so much about it. Okay, I understood maybe 80% of this, and you understand the general idea of what I'm saying. The same thing is true when you're writing or when you're reading something. Now you can take time. You can think. Okay, I want to write this. Maybe I have to translate it in my head. Maybe I have to look up a word. But when you're taking something, when you're reading and writing, you have time to go back and think about these things when you do them. And so when you're practicing learning these things, the things that you learn in school, all of those skills have to do with these slow things. And so when you're learning how to read, write, and listen to things, there's a very Uh, if any kind of、uh, emphasis at all on speaking, it's really just to remember things and practice saying them. But the reason for this is because in most skill,、uh, most schools. Uh, especially if you go to like maybe you learned English in your elementary school, or whatever. Like you had a public education and you had to learn English for that.、Uh, the reason that you're only learning these slow skills is because those are what are required to pass a test. So we can't really sit like one teacher can't speak with a whole bunch like 30 students and do a test like that. It just you know it just doesn't have the time or the resources to do that. And so, as a result,、uh, okay, we're just going to focus on a test where we can test your reading, writing, and listening because you can check off, you know, some circles. Did you check the right answer? You have a multiple choice thing, and it doesn't matter at all about how you speak. And while you're taking these tests,、uh, you can take time to think about that. Somebody gives you something to listen to. Maybe they repeat it two times. Okay, they're really giving you time to think about that,、uh, and then that's why you're good at those skills. But when it comes time to speak, you haven't learned. Learned how to do that, and typically that's because you're not applying those same,、uh, or you are trying to apply that same way of learning to learning how to speak. So, just explaining this and making sure it's very clear, because this is the most important thing to understand, especially if you're confused or you're angry, even like why I've been learning English for years. Why can I read, listen, and write, but I can't say anything? Why can I not express myself? It's because you're developing these slow skills over here, but not the fast skill of speaking. 
And when you're speaking, you need to be able to respond automatically. You need to be able to express yourself spontaneously, to respond to people quickly and with like some smart sounding thing that will impress that person. The more you can do that, wow, that's amazing. And that's when you can actually speak fluently. And the only way to do that is to actually practice those things. And that's why it's a different skill. The actual skill of speaking is different from these other skills. So you have to learn them in a different way. So whether you're learning with me, whether you're, you know, taking Taking classes with me, like this is exactly how we teach people in the fluency course in Master English Conversation. We're walking people through a series of steps that trains them to think because those are the skills that you did not get uh, when you were learning in really pretty much any kind of language course. So you're learning how to read, write, and listen to things because, okay, you're understanding the language, you're learning the language, but the reason you can't put all of those things together, the reason you know grammar but you can't use it confidently when you speak, or the reason and you know vocabulary, but you can't use it confidently when you speak. Again, all these things, like you have all this information, but you can't use it fluently because you haven't been trained to do that. So if you haven't been trained to do that, this is exactly what we do. And again, things like Master English Conversation and the Fluency Course, where all these programs are designed to train you to do the things that you did not learn how to do in school. And so really my, my job, like I'm trying to educate people, but really my job is to like to clean up the problem created by traditional language learning methods. So all of these things over here, if you're just reading, writing, and listening, you're learning all this information, you know lots of words and phrases, but if you can't use it, now you have to begin training yourself. The other important point I want to make about this, so the most important thing, the one thing is that these skills, reading, writing, and listening, are different from the skill of speaking. So you have to learn them in different ways. You can't take that same way uh, of learning how to read, write, and listen, and then apply that to speaking. It doesn't work that way. You actually have to train, you actually have to speak, and you use it the same way you're developing any habit, like uh, maybe an instrument or getting into the gym to, to build some muscles. But the other thing I want you to remember is that if you do struggle to speak, if you can read, you can write, you can listen, you can understand almost everything I'm saying in this video, but you still can't speak, it's not your fault. And I really want to make that clear because so many people, they, they learn it, uh, they learn English through the traditional way, and then they think they're stupid. I certainly thought I was when I was, I failed French, I failed Spanish, and I was failing Sp uh, Japanese initially when I was first starting to learn it. Uh, uh, and it was only after I realized, okay, I have to actually start training myself to speak. I can't be using these same, uh, same methods with reading, writing, and listening if I want to become a confident speaker. So the, the second most important point of this and really the, the other big thing I try to teach learners is that if you do struggle, it's really not your fault. You were just trained, uh, you were given a bunch of information, but you were never trained how to put it together. So there's nothing wrong with you, and that's really the most important point about this video, I guess, specifically, uh, besides that you need to learn in different ways, but really there's nothing wrong with you that will stop you from becoming fluent if you just start learning uh, how to practice your listening and your writing and your speaking. Or excuse me, if you just start start actually uh, applying your speaking in the same way that you should be, uh, like you would train, you know, any kind of other skill. So uh, I can't tell you like everything because it would require a lot of information to explain everything we do in the fluency course or master English conversation. Uh, but just the first step to this, I'll give you just like the first step to make it really easy is to focus on the, the most commonly used uh, conversational phrase phrases you hear in everyday speech. And if you learn these things, these are the things that people are mostly learning uh, and mostly using every day. So I give an example. Uh, I have friends of mine uh, back in America that whenever something positive happens, they say like, that's awesome. That's awesome. So somebody got a new job. That's awesome. Somebody got uh, somebody got a, a promotion at work. That's awesome. Somebody found uh, a kitten on the street and took it home. Wow, that's awesome. Or if it's a negative situation, they say, oh, that sucks. That sucks. Oh, that sucks. You lost your job. Oh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry about that. That sucks. So people are using a very limited vocabulary. And if you understand the limited vocabulary, uh, then it doesn't really matter what your, what situation you're in because you can apply the same limited vocabulary in many different ways, whether it's uh, a professional situation or a more casual and common one. But I don't want to give you too much information in this video, but really the, the two most important things I want you to remember. Number one, 
If you can understand and you can write and you can read things, but you can't speak, you need to change the way you learn. And this is, again, something we can help you do with the Fluency Course and Master English Conversation. And these are really the same program. It's just different collections of, uh, of lesson sets for that. Uh, the other thing is that it's not your fault. Really, I want you to understand that. Like, I thought for so long that I was too stupid to learn a second language. I thought, why am I doing this? Like, there must be something wrong with me. All these other people can get fluent, but maybe I can't. Maybe I'm the exception. I'm the, I'm the stupid one. Uh, but as soon as I started changing the way I learned, it becomes as easy as like learning to dribble a basketball or play an instrument or sing or play the drums or do anything else. It's just a skill. And if you learn it the right way, anybody can do it. Well, that's it. I don't want to give you again too much information, but hopefully I'm giving you some positivity and giving you that first step right there. Again, this is something we do in Master English Conversation in the Fluency course to help people learn. But think about learning the most common things, the most casual things. Even watch uh, like a couple of my videos and listen for the same words that I use over and over again. And you'll think, ah, like that's a word. And actually, if you watch my videos enough times, uh, you'll, you'll get to see me like, ah, I think Drew is going to say this. You actually develop a skill, a really cool skill that native speakers have where they can anticipate what other people are going to say. And when you know what people are going to say before they speak, wow, that's like taking your fluency to a, a whole nother level. Anyway, again, I don't want to give you too much information, but just remember uh, to learn the same way that you would be training. You know, you actually have to speak. You have to communicate with people. You have to drill. You have to rehearse. You have to practice. Uh, and then you have to find the right ways to meet native English speakers, uh, native English speakers to practice with. But the other thing, the most important one, it's not your fault. If you have problems, it's just because of the way you learn, not because there's anything wrong with you. Anyway, I will leave it there. And uh, if you'd like to like this video, uh, just so I know that you are listening to me, understanding what I'm saying, and that you understand, uh, again, like these two really important points about language learning. Do like this video. Become a subscriber to the YouTube channel if you have not already. And, well, you could tell maybe 1,238 people about this. That's a, that sounds like a nice a nice number. So tell that many people about this. Share it on Facebook, you know, whatever. You could go go to MySpace if you have a MySpace account. Share it on MySpace too. Anyway, uh, I, I don't I don't think uh, maybe, maybe nobody has MySpace anymore. But it would be funny just to share some stuff on MySpace uh, anyway, just to see what happens with it. Uh, anyway, uh, the final thing I'll let you know is that you can click right on the video. Uh, on the link in this video. Hopefully I'm not speaking too quickly. People have been asking me to speak faster, so trying to give a little bit of that. Uh, and again, like to help you understand this, like you gotta, you gotta train your listening, you gotta train your speaking in the same way. So all these things, they come together uh, from training your speaking in the right way. But remembering that you can't do it the same way you learn uh, reading, writing, and listening. But to help you with all of these skills, you can click on the link in this video to take our free English fluency quiz. And no matter what you struggle with, Ooh, it's getting hot in here too. No matter what you struggle with, we can help you with all of your fluency skills, whether it's reading, writing, listening, speaking, you, know, you struggle with grammar, all these things. Click on the link to begin doing that absolutely free. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.